two reasons for excitement on today's Friday Wine Time. One is our new initiate, George. Thank you very much for having me, Barley. Welcome. It's an honour. He's uh, in our little sacred Friday Wine Time bubble. And the second reason for much cheerful activity is our wines that we've opened today because they are spot on and very exciting. <laughs> okay, let's start. Uh, the first one is a slightly sparkling Chardonnay. Not enough to bottle under a champagne cork, just a normal cork. Uh, from some producers that you already know and that are very close to my heart because they used to live around the corner. Castillo di Luzzano, the, uh, the castle on top of the hill with the twin sisters. You all know the story. So, let's give it a go. It's from Lombardy, it's on the border with Emilia Romana. George, what do you think? Just uh, the nose, it's very, it's very citrusy, lemony, very refreshing. Mm. Um, but the, the most main thing I, well, the thing I love about this wine is... Once you, once you taste it, it's a sherbet. Do you get that sherbet? Steals all my lines from the last clip. <laughs> I do think it's sherbet, George. Yeah, that is exactly. That's right. I actually came up with that first. It is very sherbety, without the licorice. Sort of the dib dabs if you had when you were a kid. And you get the same sensation as well, the zing, the brrrp. Yeah. And awesome. on your tongue, and it's great, and it's niche, and it just fits in that gap between when you want a fizzy wine and when you want something like Chablis, it's got the breeziness, it's got the uplifting, mm. and the bubbles, they just make you cheerful. Do they make it you more really cheerful? It really does. Not really. No. Not going to lie to you. They make more cheerful. But they are brilliant. I mean, it's very light wine, refreshing, and the bubbles just lift it up that little bit further, just pokes it up as far you as it can go. Definitely come in and try it. That's definitely a try. And the great thing about this is the contrast. So we're oh. moving on to a Rui, same grape, remember, and just a world of difference. They were cooking croissants across the road this morning when I came into work and you've got that whole waft of buttery, pastry, crispy croissant outside with that squidgy bit in the middle that I really think you can smell and, uh, and there it is. Amazing. You know from that, I get apricots, yeah. like um, not just straight, not just straight apricots, apricots like in a pie, if it was in a pie. So. Mm. So we're pretty much in accord. There's pastry, it's there's dairy. It's almost flowery, like lilies. Are you getting that flowery? Um, vaguely, I think. I mean, mm. you get the glycerin, which is sort of gives you that associative weight. Um, yeah. I'm not sure I get lilies. They're quite strongly scented. I, get I guess you get the headiness. Yeah. And that richness of uh, flavour, which I can see. I can see the intoxicating lily smell. Vaguely. Towards the end, for me, I just get a little sweet kick. Do you get that sweet kick? Yeah, it's not real sweetness, there's no yeah. sugar in it, so it's a dry wine. But from the oak, you get that vanilla um, and mm. that richness mm. to it. Mm. That's where the dairy comes in. And uh, what we were saying before, it's sort of it's got a tang, which George went for gooseberries. Um, but I think maybe if we see it in terms of gooseberry fool, so you've got the tang and then the cream and the weight, yeah. just bring that down, put it in balance. And it's a great find, really reasonable. Okay, moving on. Now, my opinion of this one has been vaguely tainted by the fact that my friend has got a uh, one of these pedigree cats that somehow been bred with a lion. Do you know that one? I uh, no, I've never yeah. heard of that. It's really big and muscly, and, uh, and it's got stripes, and it's called Romeo. <laughs> and you can. Huh? Sorry, I don't. I just don't think that's true at all. I don't think I've ever heard of being. It's massive. It's really aggressive. Okay, if you, you have heard of uh, being able to. To breed a cat with a lion, considering the size difference, just please comment yeah, in the box. I don't think they had well, anyway, yeah. anyway, you can often find Toby on his balcony going, Romeo! Trying to call his cat in from across London. So, uh, But I love this wine before that association came in as well. Um, another wine from the Castillo di Luzzano women. Um, and this is Gaternio, so it's a blend with Barbera. And. Uh, mm. This hails from 2007. It's got a little bit of age on it already. George? Very, very earthy, woodlandy, sort of woodland. Yeah, let me just. Yeah. It's like on the. Uh, I always used to go pick bilberries on the sugar loaf and wet bilberry bushes, which are, I think they're sort of local strain of blueberry, and mm. wet bracken. Yeah. And that's sort of very fresh air. I'd go. I've, I'm actually with you on that one, apart from I'd go with um, sort of blackberries. Mm. Blueberries even, blueberries, that aftertaste of blueberries, the slighter, uh, the tannins, you get a few tannins, it's sort of, that's what you get with the, with the blueberries, you don't have to put any sugar on them. Yeah, you get that? yeah. I agree. It's very drying, very elegant. Um, 
I think it could possibly need some food. Ooh, after you spit it out or swallow, um, about three seconds later you get that ping, you get a real ping of sweetness, of sweet food and grounds yeah. and crumble and wow that's, got it's still going on, we're what, ten seconds after I spat Just it out, going that's amazing, that's so I'm very impressed, but ooh, that's, that's, this is great, sorry, I just followed some turnitures today, <laughs> um, but I'm just so impressed with this range of wines. Let's move on because this is a bit of a hefty comparison. This Thank comes you. from Cardel Vent, which is dialect for Windy House or House of the Wind, um, on the other side of Lombardy. So still same region, but going more towards Brescia. And I've got quite good range from this region, which is quite unusual. It's where French Cord comes from. Um, but this is from Tilatica, DOC. I love this one. I think nose is so different to the actual uh, to the wine. It's um, what I could compare it to. If the, when you're cutting the lawn with a lawnmower, it's sort of that smell of, of the cut grass with the engine oil. It doesn't sound complimentary, but it just, just works together, you know? It's full of secondary characteristics. It's like mm. when they're laying the road and you get that hot, wet tarmac smell. Mm. It's very heat. It really is, it does feel like it's got that heat trapped into it somehow. And it's very That's gamey, it. very rich. It would go well any sort of game, game birds, anything game it would go well with. Be Venison would be brilliant. That'd be perfect. And this one would be some sort of dry beef stew and mashed potato. Yeah. Venison stew, that'd be brilliant for. Oh, venison yeah. stew. <laughs> Both of them actually would be great for venison <laughs> stew. What an interesting collection of wines. Great to compare these reds from Lombardy and the use of Chardonnay. One from the Coach Chardonnay, one from Lombardy. I think this will provoke some excitement and maybe some argument, maybe you guys will hate them, maybe you'll love them, um, and come in and meet George, he'll be here tomorrow, <laughs> and this has been a great 